Come on. Come on. It's okay. Come on. So she gets the idea. That's good. Good girl. Good girl. Hello everyone and welcome to my first reading vlog of the new year. It is currently January 12th and I have been filming a lot of different clips but I haven't filmed a little chatty intro or anything yet um, so I thought now would be a good time to do so. Um, soon I'm going to be bringing Willow to the vet so I'm just going to quickly go through some things that I wanted to talk about and then I have to go. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful January. There are quite a few new people. Uh, on my channel which is very exciting and very crazy I feel like recently we have had a lot of new people come so if you are new here I'm so happy you're here thank you so much for joining my little family when I first started my channel um, that's how I always ended videos I always said thank you for being part of my little family and my little family is, is growing and that's just one of the greatest things ever so thank you so much I care about each and every one of you immensely and I love reading your comments and talking to you guys on there's a fuzz <laughs> on social media and just in the comments so thank you all so much for being so wonderful and supportive and I just love you very very much so without being too mushy um I wanted to talk about the second book that I read this year but also the first book that I read this year the first book I read this year was an audiobook of Matilda I listened to the Kate Winslet audiobook and I loved it. I thought it was so wonderful. This was actually my first time reading Matilda. I never read it before and I can't believe that I hadn't because it's so iconic. I grew up watching the movie adaptation, the movie version, um, and I that's just such a part of my and my sister's childhood. We always loved watching that movie, but I never read the book. I finally read the book. One of my favorite things about Matilda was they compared the trench bull to Mr. Squares and Nicholas Nickleby and I just thought that that was amazing because I love when books compare things to other books and when books are a main part of other books. At some points when she was narrating some of the some of the people she didn't even sound like herself which I thought was amazing. I mean clearly she's a professional actress so of course. Then the second book that I read this year I 
loved it. I loved it so much and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it. I recently mentioned it, oop, you saw it. I recently mentioned it in my last video, which was my um, 2022 reading goals and TBR where I show you guys, I bring you all over my bookshelves and I show you what books I really want to read in 2022. And I mentioned that I want to reread my favorite contemporary series in preparation for the third book in the trilogy, which is coming out in September, that is Beartown and Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. And Frederick Bachman is my favorite contemporary writer ever. I, I love him so much. He's a Swedish author and he is just amazing. In November of 2020, the um, English translation was released. It was released prior in Sweden, in Swedish. And, um, and I bought it immediately because I knew that I wanted to read it, obviously, because he's my favorite. And then a year went by, or what, two years? A year and a half? November of 2020, and I just read it in January of 2022. That is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Oh my god, <laughs> I loved this. I knew I would love it. I put it off for so long because in my very strange brain, I don't want to not have an unread Frederick Bachman book on my shelves. And I still do have an unread book on my shelves from him. It is Brit Marie Was Here. And so I don't feel entirely at a loss for Frederick Bachman because I always know Brit Marie is waiting for me as well as the new sequel, or the, the concluding book in the trilogy, The Winners, which is a part of Beartown. Anyway, so I put it off for so long because I just wanted to hold off as long as I could, but I just wanted to read it so badly. I was like, Carolyn, this makes absolutely no sense. So I read it, and it's a new favorite book of all time. It's the second book that I read this year, and it was a five billion star read. I loved it so much. I wrote a very lengthy Goodreads review, so I thought instead of me babbling on about it, I thought that I would just read my Goodreads review, which is something that I used to do a lot on my channel, just because I'm quite the rambler, you all know this. Um, if you don't, now you do. And I could just go on and on and on. I have a hard time shutting up. So I'm gonna read my Goodreads review to prevent myself from going on and on. It's quite long anyway, so does is this really improving? I don't know. Okay, here we go. When I tell you I love everything Frederick Bachman writes, I genuinely mean I love everything Frederick Bachman writes. I bought this book the second it was published in November of 2020. I raced to the bookshop and felt a thrill when I held it in my hands. Then, naturally, I proceeded to not read it for more than a year. I knew I'd love it because I love absolutely everything Frederick Bachman writes. The only other book of his I haven't read yet is Brit Marie Was Here, mainly because I don't want to not have an unread Bachman book on my shelves. Luckily, he's still writing and I get to look forward to new releases, but I still didn't want to pick the book up and finish it. Well, clearly, I finally did. And I still have Brit Marie Was Here waiting for me on my shelves, so I don't feel entirely at a loss for unread Bachman books. So, anxious people, where do I even begin? What I love about this story and his writing, besides absolutely everything, is his humor. This book deals with quite heavy and important topics, but every page is full of laughter and the silliness of our idiotic human minds. He kept explaining what this book was about, and I loved that. It's about a bank robbery, a hostage drama, an apartment viewing, a bridge, but most certainly it's about idiots. <laughs> All it takes is one really idiotic idea. What Bachman does so brilliantly is show that we're all idiots in our own way. This book is in fact about all those things I just mentioned, but mainly, it's about how everyone is just trying to live their life the best they can. Sometimes life makes us do really idiotic things, especially when it comes to the people we love. I couldn't put this book down. The past few days while I was reading this story, life felt like a series of obstacles keeping me from reading this book, and that's one of the best feelings. This book is also about caring for people you barely know. What I find even more beautiful is how, as readers, we not only care for people we barely know, but for people who don't even exist. These people were made up by one person, who we also barely know, but through a collection of words, it feels like we've known them all our lives. Life does make us do really idiotic things, especially when it comes to reading. I will continue to not read Brit Marie because I don't want to not have an unread Bachman book on my shelves. Yes, that's absolutely idiotic. Please, please, please read this book, as well as all of his other books. 
Thank you, Frederick Bachman. Sincerely, an idiot. <laughs> and that's my Goodreads view. And one thing that he ke that he keeps repeating in this book is how we're all idiots and how there are so many idiots in the world and we do such idiotic things for the people that we love and for people that we barely know. And it's just, it's about mental health and how important it is to be there for one another. It's set up as a bank robbery turned into a hostage drama, but it's so much more than that. And he also mentions at one point, maybe this isn't really about a bank robbery and hostage drama. Maybe this is a book about a bridge because there's a bridge in this book that is really, uh, it sets up so much of the story and it's a really great symbol for this very important event that affects a lot of the characters' lives. This book is incredible. It is incredibly funny. It is incredibly heartfelt. It is incredibly emotional. It's beautiful. It's impactful and it's affecting. And it's everything that I love about Frederick Bachman. I love everything that this man writes <laughs> and it's a little ridiculous. Even his Instagram, little Instagram captions, they're like a sentence long. They just crack me up and they're so sweet and heartfelt and I really just feel like I wanna be his best friend. And I do feel like I know him through his writing, even though I don't. Um, so it's just such a wonderful read, a new all-time favorite. And then I also watched the new Netflix miniseries that they adapted the book to. It is Swedish, so I love, I love foreign films. I love reading subtitles, even though I wish I could understand different languages. Something about reading subtitles and hearing a different language, knowing that this book is set in Sweden, it is by a Swedish author, it makes it feel so authentic and so real, and it really feels like the story come to life, because I don't know any of the, the actors, I can't put them with other roles, so they really do feel like the people that they're portraying, and it was beautiful and wonderful. They did quite a few changes. Some I liked, some I didn't, because as a reader I feel like we're very protective over the books that we love, so naturally um, we'll always have something that's like, oh, well, they didn't, you know, that's not how they did it in the book. I kept saying that. I was watching it with my mom and my sister, and I just kept saying, that's different from the book, that's different from the book. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay, too. Um, anyway, then today... Because it is January and it is a new year for Dickens and Tolstoy, our book club, I am going to be starting The Raid and the Stevastopol stories. I don't know which one I want to start with. It is already January 12th and I haven't started, which I feel like is really bad of me as a host. I should have started by now. But I have... This is the Penguin edition of The Death of Ivan Ilyich and other stories. The first story that's in here is The Raid. That is in The Death of Ivan Ilyich and Other Stories, this edition. And then this one is going to have the Stevastopol stories. <clears throat> what is going on with my voice? So I'm going to be starting these today. Something else that I have been doing a lot recently is I have finally gotten back into crocheting because of the colder weather. I love crocheting. I'm trying to get into knitting as well, but knitting is much more difficult for me. Um, so I love crocheting because that's a bit more approachable. <laughs> so for a while now I have been crocheting a scarf which has been taking absolutely forever. I'm doing a series so the way that it is if you're interested in crocheting all it is is three single crochets and then a double crochet. Three single crochets, a double crochet. Three single crochets, a double crochet to make this pattern. So if you're interested, that's how I'm doing it. It's literally just rows and rows and rows of three singles and two doubles. And it's just taking me forever. It's only in this one color. This is one of my favorite colors. It's like this royal, almost cornflower blue. I've been really in love with cornflower blue recently, but this is a bit more like cool toned. Cornflower blue is a bit more purplish. Um, so anyway, I was getting a little bored of, of crocheting that scarf so I wanted to crochet something else and I decided to make a hat or a beanie for the first time and it took me barely three days. I didn't realize it would be so easy. I showed it for, um, for the first time on my channel in my last video that I was just mentioning and I finished it. Here it is. Here is my beanie. I am in love with it. It is so cute. I love the yarn colors are it's just so beautiful. And I did, the first time I did a, um, 
this kind of slip stitch which where you like join fabric together I'm very proud of it <laughs> and so I followed a lot of people ask um, if I can do tutorials of crocheting I don't know if I am qualified enough <laughs> um, I've never done a crochet tutorial before but I can definitely try um, I followed two different tutorials to make this hat um, I followed one for the actual structure of the body of the beanie and then I followed another for the ribbing because the one that I was following for the structure of the actual beanie I didn't love how the rib looked and I really wanted like the turnover ribbing the one that she was doing in the tutorial was a bit different so um, I found another tutorial that showed how to do um, attach ribbing and so that's just what I did so this is two tutorials in one um, and yes so I don't want to take credit because I didn't design the pattern or anything but I love it um, should I put it on it's just so cute do I look stupid <laughs> I love it so much here it is I love it so now I want to make it in like a million different colors and um, and I, re I think I might go to the yarn store after I bring Willow to the vet because I really want to make a navy blue one and they they're so easy to make and they're so quick well my hair looks fantastic um, <laughs> they're really easy to make and they don't take long at all so they're perfect projects to do while you're working on like other longer projects so yes very very happy I want to do a navy blue one um, I've been getting back into like the crochet videos on YouTube, the crochet community, I love it, and the knitting community. Anyway, I have to bring Willow to the vet, and then I might go yarn shopping, so maybe I'll bring you guys with me, um, and I will talk to you very soon. Hello again everyone! Some time has gone by. Today is January 18th. Um, I have just been a bit busy recently so I haven't been updating as much as I would have liked but this past weekend I spent a lot of time with my family which was great. I got a lot of work done but I also spent some nice time with my sister and I haven't been doing too much reading. I've been doing a lot of crocheting which is good so I did go to the yarn store as you guys saw and I bought some more yarn um, to make more beanies and more hats and just more uh, crochet stuff in general. So I did finish my navy blue beanie that I wanted to make and the only problem was, and I talked about this on my Instagram, I shared a little video of me wearing it, <laughs> um, I made it a little too big so I had to fold in the back seam and it's just a little bulky now. I mean, I, I tried to flatten it as much as possible. I put it on. I asked my whole family, and I was like, please be honest with me. Do I look stupid? Um, and they said no, that you can't really tell. Um, I don't want to put it on right now because that's just, I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm still slightly embarrassed. Um, but so I think I'm either going to leave it alone and do another one in a slightly different stitch style. Like instead of having this be flat um, double crochets, then I'm going to do it all ribbed, kind of like how I did the um, the turnover rib. So that's my little crochet update. I do I did start making another checkered hat. Willow, come here. Come here, say hello. I have Willow with me, of course. She's a little rambunctious today. Willow, say hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Say hello. Say hello. She's a little wacko. You're a little wacko today. Um I did start making a different checkered beanie, but I wasn't loving how it was turning out, so I actually unraveled the whole thing, and I think I'm going to try doing a different style with different colors. I just didn't like the color combination. Anyway, super random side note, you guys might not even care. I did start reading The Raid, as you guys saw. I started reading The Raid by Tolstoy for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy debate. I haven't started this Sevastopol stories because I'm going to start that after I finish the raid. I am about five chapters in, which is about like 15 pages in, and it's 30 pages. So I'm going to finish this today and let you guys know what I think about it. I think it's a wonderful exploration of a person's first experience with war. It feels like it's based on Tolstoy's own experience going to the Caucasus with his brother, and um, and I, I definitely have to do some research on that because I'm not 100% sure, but this does feel really personal. I love the way that he writes the emotional side of battle and war, and that's what I loved so much about War and Peace, was that even though War and Peace was a bit more telling us about how all of the battles were working and the intricacies of um, the way that they were going about the battles, but the the emotional side, I think, is his strong point, and that's what I'm really, really loving so far about the raid. So very happy to be reading that. I love a young Tolstoy. I think he's just so fantastic. I do have three new books. One I haven't unboxed yet, so I thought I could unbox it on camera. The other two, um, the first one I have here is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. This is going to be my first Murakami book. I am so excited to read it. I've heard incredible things about it. There's willow hair on it. <laughs> and I believe this is a coming of age story and I really don't want to know anything else because I just want to be hopefully pleasantly surprised. Um, I know that so many people love Murakami and I really want to expand my my literary horizons this year, and I want to read some authors that I know so many people love but I haven't read from, and Murakami is definitely one of them. So I also um, ordered this from the UK because I don't like the American covers, so very happy to have this beautiful edition. So I'm hoping to start that very soon, but I have some some tentative reading plans. I'm sorry also the lighting is changing a lot because the sun is just going in front of clouds and behind clouds. Then the next book is actually an art book, and that is Drawing the Head and Hands. Willow is going nuts. Drawing the Head and Hands by Andrew Loomis. Andrew Loomis is a very famous illustrator. He created this technique of drawing heads that's called the Loomis Method and the, um, the Loomis Head, and it's based around a cylinder and where the different planes of the face land and different features of the face land. And um, I'm really interested in working with the Loomis Method and seeing how I like it. This is just a fantastic book full of the techniques that he uses and it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. You can kind of see here so it works with cylinders and where the different features of the face land. And let's see. So the all-important cross of the ball. So yeah, we start with the ball and then you do the different crosses where different where the brow brow line lands, the nose, the lips, um, the crown of the head, where the ear and the jaw line work together. So it's all about um, oh with different ages as well. So you have young kids to teenagers, to adults, to um, older people. 
And then at that very end, he goes over how to draw the hands, which is something that I am very passionate about. If you are new here or new to my illustrating, in art school I did a series of book covers that took the the motif and the element of hands and ways to express emotion through hands and I did a bunch of book covers with hands um, to to express the narrative through the visual emotion with hands if that makes any sense um, anyway so that's something that I would definitely love to explore more is to do some author portrait on the page style illustrations with hands I think that, that would be fun. Speaking of on the page author portraits, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I do have one other book that I want to unbox for you guys. Woo! <laughs> I freaked Willow out. Sorry, babe. Ooh. I'll give you guys a sneak peek. You guys know how much I love these editions. If not, now you will. So these are some of my favorite editions, and I haven't bought myself a copy recently. Something that I want to do this year is read a lot more um, fairy tales and folk tales and different shorter um, fables and, and folk tales. One of my favorite writers and one of many people's favorite writers is Oscar Wilde. So I got, this is the Pan Macmillan Collector's Library Edition. That's what all of these books are and I do have... Did you try biting it? I think Willow tried biting the ribbon. That's not for you. Um, I'm, I love these editions. They're so beautiful. And this is The Happy Prince and Other Stories by Oscar Wilde. How gorgeous is that cover? I just love these editions so much. They're absolutely beautiful. I think The Happy Prince was meant for children. And it has beautiful ink illustrations. So stunning. Look how beautiful those are. I love ink illustrations and classics. They are just so charming. Oh wow. Oh these are stunning. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Isn't that so beautiful? Oh my god. I'm so glad that I got this edition. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god. This is speaking to me. Oh wow. I'm very, very, very passionate about fairy tales, and um, and I, I used to read them all the time when I was younger, and I read a few of them last year, but I definitely want to read a lot more of them this year. I have a fantastic collection of Philip Pullman's um, The Grimm's Fairy Tales. Philip Pullman did an edition, and I have a bunch of um, Celtic mythology and folk tales, so definitely want to re do some more reading of those. This I'm really excited to read and to especially look at the illustrations. <gasps> oh, I'm obsessed. <gasps> oh, wait, I love that. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, guys. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited about this, as you can tell. <laughs> I have a really hard time containing my excitement. I feel like sometimes it's a little ridiculous, like, Carolyn, please settle down. Oh, that reminds me of Don Quixote, whenever I see a windmill. Wow, I could just, I, I just want to look through all of these right now. Look how beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay, I know so many people love the story of the Happy Prince, and I read the first page because I just wanted to see how it read. Um, my favorite Oscar Wilde, ugh, the picture of Dorian Gray. I love the importance of being earnest. That's a play and a novel, obviously, so yeah, those are probably my two favorites, but I definitely want to read more Oscar Wilde, and this is definitely going to be read very soon. It begins by saying, The Happy Prince. High above the city, on a tall column, stood the statue of the Happy Prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold. For eyes he had two bright sapphires, and a large red ruby glowed in his sword hilt. He was very much admired indeed. He is as beautiful as a weathercock, remarked one of the town councillors, who wished to gain a reputation for having artistic tastes. Only not quite so useful, he added, fearing lest people should think him unpractical, which he really was not. 
Why can't you be like the happy prince, asked a sensible mother of her little boy who was crying for the moon. The happy prince never dreams of crying for anything. I am glad there is someone in the world who is quite happy, muttered a disappointed man as he gazed at the wonderful statue. I love it already. Oh, it's and it's just such a beautifully illustrated book. Incredibly excited about this book. Oh, I just want to start reading it now. Mm. But I also haven't started The Witcher 2. I really want to start reading The Witcher. I really want to start reading this. I really want to start reading Murakami. I want to start reading so many things. Anyway, um, the last little bit of this vlog, and then I'm going to close it out. I finished my latest auth author portrait on the page author portrait. So this is Beatrix Potter, which with the graphite is shining <laughs> off of the light. Anyway, so that's Beatrix, and I did put her on the page. So if you are new here, um, I do, which quite a few of you are, so thank you so much for joining my channel. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. So excited to see so many new faces. I am an illustrator, and I do illustrations, and I sell them on my Etsy shop, and the illustrations that I sell are on the page author portraits, as well as I have done a few of those hand paintings that I was just talking about, and I want to do a bit more, expand my, um, my product line on my Etsy shop and, and do a bit more with that, but anyway, the main part of my Etsy shop is my on-the-page author portraits where I do graphite illustrations of authors and then in Photoshop I take the the printed page or the illustrations in certain cases and I overlay them on top of the author portrait and I make it sort of look like uh, I drew them on the original manuscripts or it's kind of just my way of combining words and pictures to sort of honor the authors that we love so much because I feel like as much as we appreciate the authors when we read their stories, I oftentimes find myself forgetting that they were real people and I put them on this huge pedestal and I picture them as these incredible geniuses but really they were just like you and I, they were just regular people and beautiful, beautiful people that deserve to be honored and recognized and so I feel like my my whole hope for my author portraits is to combine the words in the pictures to honor the authors that we all love so much and to... Um, to put them in frames or to use them as bookmarks or to, you know, cover our walls with them. Um, it's just a way to sort of uh, pay homage to the wonderful authors that we love so much and that have done such incredible work. Um, yes, and, and the wonderful books that we get to read and that they have given us. So it's my little thank you to these authors. Um, and thank you guys so much for your support and enthusiasm and all of your requests. I have a huge list of authors that I want to do, as well as a bunch of other stuff that I want to do. So very excited about that. Anyway, I filmed my whole process of working on my Beatrix Potter author portrait, so I thought I would share that with you all. I hope you enjoy watching me put Beatrix Potter on the sketch page and then on the written page. Um, and I'm just so, so happy with how she turned out. And if you guys are curious about when my Etsy is going to be restocked, I just put up a new order. I just placed a new order for a bunch of, bunch of prints. It's going to be quite a large restock, so I hope you guys are excited about that. I'm super excited. And I have a new product to show you that I haven't sold yet in my Etsy shop before. It's very new. Very exciting, a little scary because I don't know how it's going to go, but that's going to also be released in um, my next restock. I'm hoping to have my next restock be available and um, up for purchase at the end of January or the beginning of February. It really depends on when the prints arrive. They're supposed to get here around the end of January and then I have to photograph them upload them and get ready for shipments and all that stuff so it is a little time consuming but very very excited about that and yes super happy with how Beatrix Potter's author portrait turned out. I really wanted it to be um, honoring her as a writer but also as an illustrator but also just as a person with her her naturalist work and her um, 
her connection to nature and her home and the land that she lived on and how that really influenced all of her writing. So anyway, enough of me babbling. I hope you enjoy watching me put Beatrix Potter on the page and she will be available very soon as well as my newest ones are Mary Shelley, Sylvia Plath, Boris Pasternak, and um, Beatrix Potter are my four new author portraits. And then there are going to be a bunch of my older author portraits that are going to be restocked. I asked on Instagram which authors you want me to restock again, which past authors, and a lot of you said all of them because you want to collect them. That means more than I can put into little measly words. It just means so much to me. And um, I did restock quite a few of the old ones, not all of them, but hopefully um, the other ones that I haven't restocked will, will circulate back eventually. Anyway, okay, enough of me yammering on. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed. And now, let's draw Beatrix Potter.
right, and there we have it. That is Beatrix Potter on the page of her hand-drawn and hand-written manuscripts of the Tale of Peter Rabbit, as well as some of her other illustrations of her home, different animals, letters that she has written to people, and I'm just so happy with how it came out. I decided to take a bunch of different elements from each from each one of her illustrations or letters or stories and kind of put them all together and curate them and arrange them in a way that I think was cohesive and beautiful and sort of told her own story. Um, so very happy with how that turned out and I hope you guys like it and it will be available very, very soon in my Etsy shop. So excited to see how it turns out because um, it's going to be arriving very soon. That's always kind of a little nerve wracking for me to get the box in and to see how it actually all came out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed. Um, I will update you guys on all of my reading and everything in the next reading vlog. So I look forward to seeing you there. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful January and a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Willow is asleep on my lap now, but she'll say goodbye too. Willow also wants to say goodbye. <laughs> she We'll see you very soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy reading. <laughs>